What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today, we're gonna take a look at this amazing Aorus X7 DTV8. It has the i7-8850H, which is fully overclockable. It also has a full-size GTX 1080, which is also, of course, overclockable. You can have up to 64 gigs of RAM, up to eight terabytes of storage with a full-size SSD and two M.2 NVMe SSDs. It has a plethora of ports and the kicker is, of course, it's only 0.9 inches is thick. This thing is exceptionally thin and light for how much power it packs. Now I got this review unit in from HID Evolution and this has been upgraded with thermal grizzly conductor knot by them as well as thermal pads for increased cooling efficiency. This particular unit should run a bit cooler than your standard Aorus X7. So just keep that in mind for the rest of this review. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid by HID Evolution at all, but I will have a link in the description if you wanna pick up one of these laptops. They certainly do a fantastic job with this unit being in essentially optimal working condition, both for maximum performance and with the fact that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the unit. Let's take a closer look at this ultra powerful, moderately thin and light laptop. Here we go. This 17 inch laptop has a ton of ports. Along the left side we have the speaker grill, headphone and mic jacks, three USB type A's. That's right, there's three of them here on the left side and a LAN port. Lastly, we have the exhaust. This does get quite hot. You will not wanna put your cold beverage next to the exhaust on the left side or back of this laptop. And speaking of the back, we have the exhaust ports on the left and right sides as well as the power plug and a fourth USB 3 type A. Moving to the right side, we have the other speaker grill, a super speed SD card reader capable of hitting ultra fast read and write speeds with high speed SD cards, as well as a USB type C and a Thunderbolt. Unlike most laptops, these are actually separated it's where you have a dedicated USB C and a dedicated Thunderbolt port. And of course you have the HDMI and a mini display port as well. This is one of the most fully kitted out port selections from any laptop of any size, even when you compare it to the thicker 17 inch ultra gaming laptops. This is still very competitive with the very best. So let's hop right into the performance of this thing. How much can you overclock it? Well, the surprising thing is the i7-8850H is actually very overclockable. Traditionally, CPUs with the K lineup in the end of the name are overclockable. The only situation here is that you really can't go above 4.4 gigahertz like you can with the i9-8950HK. Out of the box, Aorus undervolts this by 75 millivolts and it's overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. But the situation is when you're benchmarking or rendering video, very heavy CPU loads, it's not going to be actually hitting 4.3 gigahertz consistently because it is going to become power limited to only 63 watts of power throughput. Now this is easily bypassable by using Intel XTU. You can easily increase that total wattage throughput and increase that undervolt. I just set the undervolt to a negative 125 undervolt and didn't have any issues there. I did try doing 140, but that was a little bit too much. I ended up crashing when idle. So I just kept it at 125. Might have been able to push that a little bit more though. Out of the box, this thing hit right around the 1140 mark with throttling down to 3.5 gigahertz with that 63 watt power limit. When I increased the power limit, I was able to hit right around 1340 on a consistent and stable basis by hitting 4.3 gigahertz across all cores. Now I did overclock this to 4.4 gigahertz and it was stable with Cinebench R15 Multi and that brought the score up to 1380. I don't think that there's any other laptops out there right now that are this thin and light that are hitting these levels of scores. When it's hitting 4.4 gigahertz or even really 4.3 gigahertz, it's oftentimes hitting 101 watts of continuous throughput. And on top of that, the highest temperature I've ever seen on this laptop is 85 degrees Celsius, though normally it does stay a little bit cooler than that. And that is perfectly acceptable temperatures. It is not thermally throttling. It would only thermally throttle if it hit upwards of 90 degrees. The only exception to overclocking to 4.3 gigahertz is having an AVX offset, which means that when you're rendering video, you're gonna downclock two stops 
down to 4.1 gigahertz across all cores. And that's just because rendering video is especially tough on the processor. Now, as far as the GPU goes, out of the box, this thing is hitting right around the 1900 in the megahertz mark, and it's only capping out on temperature-wise right around 70 to 75, depending on how heavy the load is on that GPU. Now, I did undervolt the GPU and overclock it, and I was able to hit right around 1975 megahertz clock speed on the GPU, which is just basically absurdly powerful. And on top of that, I was able to hit 23,120 six in fire strike graphics test and that is higher than literally any other laptop currently on notebook check of course that is overclocked on this machine and not overclocked on those other machines now as far as actually playing games this thing was able to hit consistent clock speeds on the gpu and cpu and have very acceptable gaming temperatures with the gpu you're talking between 68 degrees to 75 degrees on average and with the cpu it depends on how heavily utilized that cpu is but i was seeing variations between 70 and 82 degrees on the cpu and when you're actually gaming the hand rest here actually stays pretty cool. Uh, I was able to game for five hours straight streaming on my gaming channel and didn't have any issues. So I think that is fantastic overall usability from a gaming perspective. Now you can also tweak the fan curve in the Aorus command and control software. By tweaking the fan curve, you can either have it run quieter or you can have it run a bit louder and have reduced temperatures overall by a few degrees. And of course, when I'm talking about all these temperatures, you have to again keep in mind that this has been upgraded with better cooling. And on top of that, I am overclocking it. So if I didn't overclock it and I were to just run it normally, I could probably run it at full normal stock clocks, just undervolt this bad boy and have a very quiet overall gaming experience. In Fortnite, I was able to hit over 200 frames per second on average with a mix of low and epic settings. In PUBG, we saw excellent performance at 131 FPS on average in Los Leones. Overall, that is extremely close to the Aorus X9. And you gotta keep in mind as well that this is without me overclocking it, that is at stock settings. Now this laptop is an obvious beast, but when it comes to the overall usability, how does it stack up? Well, the display is overall fan Fantastic. I was able to measure the nits brightness at 308 in the center, which is well above average for most high refresh rate gaming laptops. Now this display has about 94% sRGB color gamut, which is right in line with other top gaming notebooks for this year. It has great contrast and almost zero backlight bleed, only just a little bit in the top left side of the screen. So far, I would say this is my favorite experience for gaming screens. The MSI GS65 Stealth is a close contender, almost almost there. So overall, the display is fantastic. How is the keyboard? Well, the keyboard is very tactile. It's got a great overall texture to it. Now it has an overall excellent layout with dedicated function keys, home and page up, page down, and a dedicated numpad on top of that to boot. This thing has all of the essentials that you could ask for in a laptop keyboard. Not everyone is going to love this chiclet style, but I gotta say I'm used to it and I really enjoy it. It's a fantastic overall experience. Now this is a backlit keyboard and the keys are individually backlit so you can tweak them and set them to be whatever you want. Now the only downside here I think is the Aorus Fusion software is a little bit limited. I would like to see some more fun presets available. I mean we've got this wave, we've got some marquee, we've got a raindrop effect. All those things are great but I think there are some real creative options that they're lacking on this keyboard. The touchpad on this laptop is great. I wish it was about 20% larger. It definitely could be a bit larger. It'd be a little bit more usable. I mean it's not small, it's a medium size but on a laptop top this big ideally you get a bit of a beefier larger trackpad the drivers are excellent it's precise and scrolling on it is very smooth on top of that the clickiness is just about perfect the only trackpads that I think are quite a bit better on Windows is the surface book 2 as well as the razor blade lineup now the speakers on this laptop are solid they have decent bass it's definitely not the best and the mids and highs are a little bit muffled but they're there they're somewhat clear I mean if you're looking for the best speakers on a laptop, you're gonna have to get something thicker, something that can fit in a little bit larger overall speakers. In my opinion, this is not that big a deal since you'll probably be gaming with headphones anyway. Here's a sample of how the speakers sound. Even if it makes me blind, I just wanna see the light. 
Now you do have nice left right audio separation for a laptop because of the speaker grills being on the left and right sides. So that's nice overall. Decent speakers, but far from the best. Now this laptop comes with a 94 watt hour battery, which is close to the 99 watt hour maximum possible capacity that is allowed to go on airplanes. Now the downside here is that this utilizes G-Sync, which means that you're not gonna be able to take advantage of switching the graphics to the integrated card, which is much more power efficient. If you could, you might be able to get eight hours of battery life out of it, but since you can't switch the graphics, you're looking at five hours of maximum possible use when in ultra low, power saving mode, Wi-Fi off, Bluetooth off, and you're just typing in a document or watching a video that you've downloaded. Now, if you're browsing the web, you're looking at three to four hours of medium use, or if you're doing heavy productivity work or gaming, you're looking at about an hour and a half to two hours of use. Now, I wanna mention that the Oris X7, I'm just gonna reach down here and grab this, uh, it comes with a very manageable power brick. This is a 250 watt power brick and it is very thin and it comes with a USB port for charging your phone or camera or whatever it is that you need to charge. For comparison's sake, this is the size of most high-end laptops that have GTX 1080s. So this ultra thin, it's like less than half the size, maybe only 40% of the size of this big brick, but still getting 250 watts. This is the perfect compromise, in my opinion, for portability with a high power system like the Aorus X7. The Aorus X7 retails for $3,000, but this particular unit with the cooling upgraded costs $3,089. That means this laptop is not cheap, but you're gonna be paying for what you get here, because if you're gonna go for something that is this thin and and this powerful, you're gonna have to pay that premium price. Even though this thing is fairly thin and light, it still packs literally like 95% of the maximum possible power that you can get in a laptop like the Aorus X9 is only like 5% more powerful than this one and this one's $900 cheaper than that one and it's thinner and it's lighter. I think this one's a clear winner over the Aorus X9, and it's a clear winner when you compare it to many other thicker laptops. You're gonna have just as much performance or even more performance out of this guy than something like the Alienware 17, which is 1.3 inches thick and weighs almost 10 pounds, or the MSI GT75, which is even thicker and heavier. And when I compare this thing to even thinner and smaller laptops, such as the Razer Blade 15, you're getting way more power for only a little bit bigger, in my opinion, and a very manageable increase in size, but a massive performance gain. Now, the only other option in my mind is those of you out there that want maximum possible performance, you really should look at the Clevo P870 lineup or the Clevo P750. Both of those laptops feature desktop processors with the i7-8086 and are capable of being clocked at 4.9 or 5.0 gigahertz for a consistent high-end Overclock. The only place I'd recommend buying those laptops in particular is either HID Evolution, like I mentioned earlier, or potentially Eurocom. They also have an unlocked BIOS. If you really crave something that's thinner and lighter than the Aorus X7, I really highly recommend that you take a look at the Aorus X5, which is the little brother to this, and it features the same processor, though it has the GTX 1070. I can't say whether or not it can handle the same level of overclocking as this one, but overall, I'm just really impressed with where Aorus is lining up with their thinness to power and performance ratio. It is just right in the sweet spot, in my opinion, for those of you that want portable power on the go. You don't want to compromise on your performance, but at the same time, you want something that's thinner and lighter than those big, bulky gaming laptops. That's it for my review of the Aorus X7. Again, I'll have a link in the description down below if you'd like to pick one of these up from HID Evolution. And thanks so much for watching. I am doing a mega giveaway. I'm giving away my Razer Blade Pro and iPhone 10 and an onboard electric skateboard. I'll have a link to that giveaway in the top comment down below. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Brandon out.